what is up everybody welcome back to my channel today we are out in beautiful utah as you can probably see from the scenery behind me and we're just gonna kind of go over um in my opinion my top and kind of must-have mods for the klx um obviously if you watched my first video of the tour i wasted no time when it came to buying upgrades for this bike because i just wasn't a fan of how it was stock so without further ado let me show you guys my upgrades that i've done so far all right so no particular order in any of these upgrades um i'm kind of just going to go front to back i guess um but this is my most recent upgrade i got tusk handlebars these ones are a lot higher and they're a little bit angled differently. So overall, it's kind of just a more comfortable riding position. The stock ones were so low that like, if I would try to stand up on the road, if like my butt hurt or off-roading, um, I literally felt like I was gonna go over the handlebars. So I just didn't feel safe standing up on, standing up with the stock handlebars. So again, that's why I went with the Tusk ones since they sit higher. And then these ones are actually black aluminum versus the silver I guess it would be considered silver um, that the stock ones were and then along with that since I had to take off the old grips off the other ones anyway to put them on these I decided to just get new grips um, I had another pair of pro tapers but they weren't really comfortable they kind of got like slick as you were riding um, and then the black kind of started to come off of my hands which wasn't cute so <laughs> went with the still pro taper but I think they called them the cloud grips or something I don't know I'm gonna like link all these parts in the description box below so if you guys are interested you can get these parts um but yeah these are just the cloud I think is what they're called um and then I just got stingray obviously to match the bike and match this little foam thing it's in the middle of the handlebars so yeah those I guess are the first two upgrades that I think everybody should do to their KLX next upgrade we're going to talk about is the quad lock so on the new handlebars I haven't found a good position to put it yet um but this is where it's just gonna chill for now as you can see my phone was kind of angled on there before but definitely a must since obviously on here is just your speedometer and your gas gauge so if you need directions or anything you're gonna need a phone so i found that was the perfect phone holder for this bike and this next one i didn't know i would need to upgrade it until i dropped the bike and completely demolished the stock shifter so while we're on that topic <laughs> i recommend getting a new shifter so again i went i went with tusk um just a brand that i like and this one folds in so if i do drop the bike again instead of like the stock one that collapsed and just looked funky this one will just go in like this and go right back to normal so i won't have to be stranded on the trail like i was last time and then they only had green like available so <laughs> neon green it is i'm probably gonna paint it eventually but yeah and again while we're down towards the bottom of the bike i got a skid plate this one was just off of amazon again i'm gonna link all of these products in the description box below but skid plate is a must for this bike considering the amount of times that i have bottomed it out and smacked rocks you can kind of see it already on the skid plate um yeah, so definitely a must if you're gonna be off-roading or just using the bike for on-road, like kind of just commuting, then you really don't need it. But if you're gonna be doing trails and any off-roading, even if it's minor, I would just suggest it. It's not worth ruining anything. But yeah, um, that one was silver. They only had silver and neon green on Amazon. So I got that and then just spray painted it black. Moving on to the booty of the bike. Um, First and foremost, we did the Fender Delete Kit. Um, on most Enduros in general, um, they usually have the really obnoxious fender in the back. It just didn't look good. So I had to cut that off and, you know, again, just had to upgrade it. <laughs> so it just kind of makes the back end look a lot nicer and I guess kind of more of like a dirt bike vibe. And then while we're on the back of the bike, I got the PMR rack. Well, they were actually kind enough to send that out to me. So shout out to them. Um, but yeah, I just got, I needed a rack because obviously like I can wear a backpack and stuff, but like, I don't know. I don't like having anything on me like personally while I'm riding. So the rack is just a nice option if I go to the store 
or if like I have to pick up a package or something, I can just strap it to the back of the bike and not have to worry about it. Um, for example, <laughs> the other day we took the bikes to um, Rocky Mountain, I think it was ATV or something here in Utah, and that's when I saw the handlebars. So I just strapped them to the back. It kind of looked funky, but whatever, we got them home. But if I didn't have that rack, we probably would have had no way to get them home. Would have had to drive all the way back in the car and then, you know, so came in handy. Okay, the next thing I'm going to tell you guys so that you don't have to deal with what I dealt with, upgrade your tubes in your tire or just get all new tires because the stock tubes in this thing suck. So I think it's like the stock is like one to one and a half millimeter. I literally don't know how, but I popped the front tire tube and the back tire tube within like a week or two of each other. And like we weren't even doing any crazy riding. So I don't know why the hell it happened besides the fact that it's super thin. So just upgrade the tubes or the tires, like I said. I ended up putting, I think, three millimeter in the front and then three and a half, might have been three also, in the back. Um, so hopefully I don't run into any more issues because that was so annoying. The first time we were literally off-roading in Cloudcroft and James was like, oh, like your tire looks flat. And I was like, oh, like maybe like I hit a thorn or something. So we were like looking around, couldn't find anything. <laughs> so then I brought it to a shop and like, oh yeah, the thorn was inside and obviously popped the tube. But I had to ride back going super slow for probably like two miles back from the trail to our camper. So it was annoying, but just a preventative measure for you guys if you don't want to have to deal with flat tires while you're riding. Um, and yeah, I think that is all of the upgrades <laughs> that I've done so far to the bike. All right, so that is it for today's video. That is some of the upgrades that I've done so far to the bike. And you know me, we are not done upgrading yet on this bike. Um, I think the next thing, honestly, is just getting rid of these mirrors because they kind of suck. Um, in the wind, they kind of just like move around and just, I don't know, I don't like to look at the circle. I kind of want, they kind of look like diamonds, um, the ones that I was going to get. And then also going to, I don't think you guys can see it, but I'm going to upgrade the exhaust because I want my bike to sound cool and not like a little scooty poot. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I always try to rev it, and James is like, it sounds like crap, and I'm like, I know, but it is what it is, we'll get there eventually. So if any of you guys have exhaust recommendations for the KLX 230, drop them in the comments below, so I can kind of just look around and figure out which one I want to get, but yeah. Um, also, I think I'm going to go off-roading today in the beautiful scenery that you see behind me. So I'll film that, kind of probably going to do like a vlogging slash off-road, I guess, combination. But yeah, so look out for that video and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.